All right, so now that we've talked about how to calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency from the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon, let's see how we use that information to draw as many possibilities for the structure of the compound, which we denominate as being isomers. All right, so we're going to look at these four examples individually. We're going to start with C5H12, and we're going to use the IHT formula. Uh, that would be the first thing. So if you're asked to find all the isomers present in any of the structures right here, then you, you kind of want to um, start with the IHT. So let's do that. We have five carbons in the structure, so we multiply five by two and we add two to that. So we have five times two, which is 10, plus two, that's 12. We happen to have 12 hydrogens present in the structure, so we subtract 12 from it. And we divide the whole thing by two. And what we end up ultimately getting is a value of zero for the IHT. So what this is telling us is that there is no rings and there's no multiple bonds. So don't ever draw either of those things for your possibilities. If you do that, you basically messed up the IHD. So the first thing to do is to draw the molecule in basically linear fashion from left to right. Make sure that you draw a total of five carbons for your structure. And that means that you will draw the following molecule. You start with carbon on the left, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. And this is what we call a linear alkane. It's fully saturated, right? It has an IHD of zero, and it's linear, right? You, you went from left to right without having to necessarily lift your pencil or pen to draw it, or in my case, the cursor. All right, now, basically what you do now is you decrease the length of the linear chain by one value. Right here, we went with a value of five for this linear chain. Let's now input a value of four. So one, we have one, two, three, and four. Now granted, the structure still has to have five carbons. So basically what you're doing right here is you start truncating the molecule and the excess carbon that you haven't accounted for by you know drawing the linear molecule, you place it somewhere in the middle of the structure. So you could place the fifth carbon right here instead of placing it at the end. And this gives you another possibility for the same structure. The longest linear chain contains four carbons, but altogether this has five carbons and it also has 12 hydrogens. Now, um, here's where you have to start looking at the possibilities and you want to draw every unique molecule. Now, one thing that I'll say is that if you were to place this extra CH3 um, functionality onto this four um, carbon chain here on the second carbon to, to the left, basically what will happen is that you will have drawn the same molecule that we have right here. Uh, what you're going to have to keep in mind is that these molecules, you know, they are free to rotate. They're free to even rotate along their own bonds. So you placing that CH3 on this position is going to be the same as that because all you will have to do to this molecule is rotate it in this direction, counterclockwise, about 180 degrees, and you'll end up with a specific extra pseudo isomer, which is not an isomer, right? So that word pseudo, I'm using it very lightly in that regard. But once you go through all the possibilities for a four carbon chain, now you have to move down to a three carbon chain. And right here, you're kind of running out of options, right? Because if you place the extra uh, um, the, the extra two carbons on the end, you're going to end up back at the C4 long chain. Or if worse, yeah, you can end up at the C5, which basically doesn't give you anything new. So the only choice for you is to place the two extra carbons on the middle. Okay, so place one there and then place the second one over there. And by doing that, you have now five carbons here. But notice what's happened. You've basically run out of options as to where you can place the extra carbons. You have no more room available here. So what this means is that you can't really go to C2 as the, the, the final length of the molecule because ultimately you're going to have to add the extra carbons to either ends of that C2 fragment and you will undoubtedly end up back at one of these positions. But all three of these molecules are unique isomers. All right, let's do an example a little bit harder. Let's take a look at C4, excuse me, C2H4O. All right, using the index of hydrogen deficiency, the value of carbon is two. So we'll input that in the formula, two times two plus two, which is the same thing as four plus two, which is the same thing as six. So we have six minus four divided by two. Six minus four is two. So two divided by two is one. 
So here we do have a deficiency in the hydrogen count, and this is telling us that we can have a double bond or a ring. Now, here is something that we're going to have to be aware of. When we start introducing extra elements, especially elements that can have more than a single bond, right? So in the case of oxygen, you may recall from a Lewis structure lecture, um, the number of bonds that oxygen can have is, the, is based on 8 minus the group number. And since the group number of oxygen is 6, you could have up to two bonds for oxygen. So the fact that this says that we could have a double bond or a ring means that oxygen could ultimately end up being a double bond uh, functionality. And we'll draw that as an option. So here, let's start by drawing the main fragments. We have two carbons, and then we have an oxygen. Okay, so those, those are the big elements that you need to have. And I've drawn them here, you know, three times, because we're going to come up with three possibilities. All right, now, as drawn, neither a double bond nor a ring has been accounted for. So I'm going to start introducing those changes. So right here, let's make the change, introduce double bond between the two carbons. The moment you do that, you have ultimately end up uh, introducing the proper IHD count. But for elements like oxygen that need to have two bonds, as of now, this oxygen only has one bond. So you will have to introduce a hydrogen on it to make it work out. I'm going to do that towards the end. Uh, now, the second thing that we could do is instead of putting the double bond between the two carbons, we could place the double bond between the oxygen and carbon, which is kind of what I was alluding to at the beginning of the problem. And this is indeed a different molecule. And after that, um, we basically run out of options of where to place a double bond. That's it. There's no other place to, to actually put a double bond. So the only last thing that can be done is to connect all three of the atoms together to make a ring. And that will give you another molecule that has the same index of hydrogen deficiency. And as I was saying, make sure that if you have a lingering oxygen that doesn't have two bonds, make sure to place an extra you know, hydrogen that you didn't draw in the structure to account for it. And the beauty of this is that without really counting the number of hydrogens, just by using the IHT, we can come up with a proper number of hydrogen in the structure. Check the, the one right here. We added this extra hydrogen to make sure that the oxygen had two bonds. And you have an extra hydrogen right here. You have two extra hydrogens there. So you have one plus one plus two, four hydrogens. 1 plus 3, 4 hydrogens. 2 plus 2, 4 hydrogens. That's kind of the beauty of the index of hydrogen deficiency. Okay, here goes another one. This is going to be a little bit harder. And, you know, this is not to scare you guys, but notice how simple this structure is. C4H5Cl. You wouldn't even think much of this, but as you will find out, there's a lot of things that are going to arise from this thing. First things first, we apply the index of hydrogen deficiency formula. We have four carbons, so we multiply four by two and we add two. We subtract the six equivalent hydrogens and we count the halogen as a hydrogen because that's part of the rules. So six equivalent hydrogens and divide the whole thing by two. So we end up with two times four plus two, which is 10, 10 minus six, all divided by two. We end up with an index of hydrogen deficiency of two. And this means that we have all these possibilities. We could have two double bonds, we could have two rings, we could have a double bond and a ring, or we could have just a triple bond. So I'm going to start with a triple bond option. We have uh, four hydrogens, so just make sure to draw four carbons in a row. So we have one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Basically, I'm drawing the same thing. But notice here that I've introduced the triple bond in the structure. And I decided to place it at the end just to make it simple. We'll see if we have extra possibilities towards the end. All right. Now, what we're going to do is say, okay, there is four carbons in here. The only thing we're missing is the chlorine. So you just have to come up with the different possibilities. You could either place the chlorine right where the end of the triple bond is. Or... You could place it not here because this carbon already has four bonds. So definitely don't mess with carbons that already have four bonds. They are happy. They already fulfilled the octet rule. But over here, where you don't have already four bonds drawn out, uh, you could place another chlorine. So the fluorine could, get, could go right there. Or it could even go at the very end of the structure. And you can see that all three of these molecules are different from each other. That takes care of the triple bond um, counterpart where the triple bond is at the end but you could also say well what if you place the triple bond right in the middle 
this has one, two, three, and four carbons. The triple bond is at the middle. And for this thing, the carbons, second carbon and third carbon in the structure, they already have four bonds drawn out, so you can add chlorines there. So the only possibility is for you to add the chlorine on the left side or the right side. But because this molecule is free to rotate, left side chlorine or right side chlorine are basically the same molecule. So you actually only have one possibility here. And that's it for the triple bond. Let's take a look at the double bonds now. Two double bonds. For this to work out, you have to draw the four carbons. And I would recommend that you draw first the alkane formula for four carbons. And then input two double bonds. Okay, so here you have a double bond followed by another one. And I'm going to draw that three times because once again, we could place the chlorine in three different positions. Uh, so we could place the chlorine here on the very end on the left side. And I'm going to also do the same thing again. And I'll tell you in a second why that is. Uh, but you could also place the chlorine here in the middle. And if you were to place the chlorine here on the third carbon, you'll end up with this same molecule. If you place it on the very end of the molecule to the right side, you end up with either of the molecules that are drawn here on the left side. Now, the reason these two are possibilities is for is because of something known as geometric isomers. Um, if you have a double bond, you pretty much are constrained to attaining a trigonal planar shape. And the bonds are not allowed to rotate. So this chlorine pointing up and to the left is restrictly present in that position. It can't really move. And the one down into the, well, basically this is completely down, is completely positioned there and it can't really move. So these two are different isomers. We call the one right here a trans isomer because the chlorine and the extra bond here on the other side of the double bond are pointing in opposite faces of the molecule. Uh, this one is pointing both atoms or both connections in the same position or the same direction. So we call that a cis isomer. I'll, I'll talk about that in a future video. But the other thing you could do is draw the double bonds directly connected to the same carbon. And here I'm going to draw the carbon as a little dot just to make it simple. Otherwise, it looks like an elongated double bond. Uh, so you have one double bond and another double bond. And you still have one, two, three, and four carbons. So you could draw the following three possibilities chlorine on the end on the left chlorine on the second carbon the fourth car the third carbon cannot really be um, changed because it already has four bonds but the uh, final carbon here on the right side can definitely have a chlorine so we can place one there and you have all your um, different isomers that takes care of the two double bonds let's see now about the one double bond and the one ring uh, since we have four carbons the first thing will be to draw a four member ring uh, so basically square and you need to have a double bond present so draw a double bond in this case the possibilities are as follows either you have the chlorine bound to the double bond the carbon or you have it on the singly bonded carbon that's pretty much it but you could also draw a three member ring instead of a four member ring with a double bond and now here the possibilities are a little bit more you could have chlorines either on the non doubly bonded carbon or on one of the doubly bonded carbons and in addition to that remember that this is only three carbons you still have to place the extra ch right so we placed it on either the non uh, double bonded carbon or the double bonded carbon and then the chlorine can be either connected to the same carbon or some other carbon and the same thing here you have kind of like this uh, alternation so this kind of contributes all of the different options for the ring plus double bond and as you can see we got quite a bit of them all four of these structures are unique you can see that there is no way to rotate this molecule so you end up with any of the previous ones and vice versa all right the last thing is two rings the only possibility for four carbons for you to come up with four rings is to have two triangular structures basically right next to each other uh, we call these bicycle compounds but you know aside from that this is really the only two rings that you can draw involving four carbons. And here you have one, two, three, and four. And either you have the carbon, you know, on one of the corners or you have it on the middle. And together, all these molecules give you the full extent of isomers that you could have for the structure. Now, the last one that I'm going to do is this molecule over here. If you calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency, eventually you'll find out that you have a deficiency of four. And this has a huge number of possibilities as to how you can get it. But the ones that I'm going to be focusing on 
are the ones that contain only four, uh, excuse me, that contain a structure known as benzene, which looks as follows. It's a six member ring with three double bonds. And when you have uh, the bromine with the chlorine, you can place the chlorine first, and then the possibilities are simply this. You can have the bromine, or excuse me, the second chlorine on the uh, right next to the first one. You could have it two positions away, or you could have it three positions away. And these are really the only three possibilities for having these two uh, elements. All right, let me stop the video right here, and we'll continue uh, on the next one.